Welcome. Thank you for joining me. My name is Mike Seville. I uh, teach the Intro to Electromagnetics course here. Now, I typically teach this in the fall, and my colleague, uh, Yan Zhuang, teaches this in uh, the spring. Now, we're both uh, professors in the Department of Electrical Engineering, and we'll have different rules perhaps this year because of the COVID-19 circumstance. For the fall, you should pay attention to how the class will be delivered. We'll have combined lecture, lecture and lab, and we may or may not have access to the lab, so we will be prepared in order to do labs through some other alternative methods using modeling and simulation and paper design. But I think you'll find that you'll get a very rewarding uh, experience from it nonetheless. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, and then we'll also be using both synchronous and asynchronous delivery. So that means I will give live interaction where you can be on at the same time, ask questions, we can have discussion, but at the same time if you can't, you can go ahead and watch a previously recorded video. Not of a length of the term, but exactly what your classmates were listening and hearing. Okay, so make sure that you are paying attention to these particulars so that you are, have the right equipment that you'll need for the class. Now in terms of electromagnetics, it's everywhere around you. Any technology you look at includes electromagnetics technology. And we'll look at some of those specific pieces in what we're doing. But whether it's medical imaging, remote sensing of the earth, or communication systems, all of these are going to rely on the same physics that are and the math that are developed in this class and the engineering principles. So the purpose of this course is really to reinforce those fundamental physics you already learned or should have learned when you take physics one and two. But then we'll transition into the EM technology and look at those engineering principles that we need in order to do design. My goal for you is that you will be well prepared to take our advanced EM courses. That means you'll have to have a good behavior and knowledge of, excuse me, a good knowledge of the behavior of electric and magnetic fields. And we'll look at certain devices like the transmission line, but we'll learn how to analyze these. We'll analyze the field's behavior. We'll analyze the power flow. We'll know how to comp put components together so that we get the most efficient power flow. And then we'll look at more advanced techniques that deal with Maxwell's theory and Maxwell's equations that tell us how do waves and energy propagate in space, reflect off of bodies and objects, and then how do we actually design systems to take advantage of those. So you might remember some basic physics about electrons and protons. Right? And we'll start with this in the class. We'll remember that electric fields are produced by charge and magnetic fields by moving current, or moving charge, current. But like Maxwell theorized that if we were to have this time harmonic behavior so that those charges are oscillating, they actually will radiate. And the electric field and the magnetic field won't be separate, but they'll be coupled. And so now waves propagate with completely new behaviors. Hertz discovered this when he did the first experiments and he showed how you could excite an antenna and radiate a field and then receive it at a great distance away. And if we can shape this metal and we can cause these electrons to behave certain ways, then we can also cause the fields to behave certain ways. I mean, look at this little antenna, this little clover antenna. Who would have thunk, right? There you go. Here's some horn antennas. And these are the kinds of patterns that you might get. Something that radiates like a donut. This is a wire antenna. Something that radiates with a single main direction, like this helical antenna. So we'll begin by looking at the communication system. The communication system doesn't take a whole lot, right? Signal generator, an antenna, some channel, and a receiving antenna and receiver. But we're going to find that in some cases we can analyze this system and its power flow just using a simple formula. But in order to understand that formula, we're going to need to look more closely at some of the specific components and also how to assemble those. So we're going to have two main lab experiences. One is to learn how to design a comm system. We'll learn about the different components like the antenna, the mixer, the oscillator. These are the electric schematics, by the way. And then we'll learn about the different pieces and their particular specifications. How do you pick one from the other? How do you read these charts? And here's the mixer. Mixer is a little bit more of a complicated component because it's an active component. It actually requires DC lines. You have to have some DC energy in here in order to make this work. But when you do and you put these two signal lines in, you get some very different outputs that you might expect. Now, it works out that we can s simplify those outputs, but we'll learn about these devices and how to use those in our system design. 
and those, by the way, the mixer is probably the most useful component of all of telecommunications and radar, next to the antenna, of course. And as you can imagine, the antenna has their own specs. And if you were to uh, design it, that's one thing. But sometimes we just need to know which antenna do we pick. How do we determine the right kind of specs? That's what we'll look at in this lab. Whether you're designing a Wi-Fi network at your home, you're trying to set up some FM radio if you're a ham operator or something like that, and you just want to design your own antenna. Heck, you can make an antenna out of a coffee can and build a whole radar system out of with that too. And it's been done before. But of course, there's always more complications to it, right? As the wave energy behaves differently at the microwave frequencies than it does down at the lower frequencies, we have to understand that. So we'll have to look at the transmission line theory that helps us understand about way, the way waves travel back and forth and the way they stand on the line. And that basically means energy is stuck on the line. If energy is stuck, then you can't put it in one and expect to get it out the other, at least not efficiently. So we'll have to look at the transmission line theory. We'll look at the network analyzer. And we'll look at the different types of tools that we would need in order to study and analyze the system. Take the Smith chart. The Smith chart is a complicated looking diagram, but it's actually used and it's actually displayed on the network analyzer. So if I'm trying to analyze a simple circuit like this one here, a signal generator on the left, a coaxial line, and an antenna. And my goal is to get the most energy from the generator to the antenna. Well, how do I design this antenna? How do I design this load? And how do I match it if it's not designed right? Well, these are things that you will learn in the lab experience. So that way we can go on to make more complicated circuits. Of course, we don't have energy that's only in the circuit. Sometimes it's radiating outward, such as from the antenna. And so the waves have different properties as well. We call it polarization. And so you're familiar with polarized sunglasses. And you can imagine light from the sun coming with all manner of randomness. But the polarizer lim it limits most of it and only admits light with one particular orientation, which we call polarization. And we use this in a lot of applications. But these are properties that we'll look at both from a mathematical perspective as well as from a physical perspective. If we were in the lab, we would be able to do these labs. Alternatively, though, we can use modeling and simulation tools that are industry standard, and you'll have a chance to do that too. So as you move forward, this class may seem complicated. It may seem like there's a lot, and it is, truthfully. There's a lot of math to it, and it's advanced math. But by the time we're done, you can look at a chart like this, and you can begin to make sense of it. You can understand what these different symbols mean, these components, how they work, why they're there. You can understand the mathematics of what does this formula mean? What does it represent? And what is, what's the nice symbol, this bold symbol? What do these hats mean? And in this particular picture of a radar, you'll understand what it means to get this particular sampled symbol and what, how it represents how far away the target was, how big the target was, and perhaps even other properties about the target. So this is where you're at in this orientation. Intro to electromagnetics. To get here, it takes three courses of math, calculus, two courses in physics, and circuits. And as you go forward, though, then you're ready to move into the microwave engineering one and two, which teaches you component design and the antenna theory. Or you can go into the remote sensing part, which includes linear systems. If you look at the microwave one and two, we're talking about active and passive components. So in this case, you can look at a circuit that might be something like this here. And these transmission lines might not be intuitive to you, but you'll, realize, you'll learn why they're designed with these little holes on the side. Or as you look at this picture, how this, these particular lines form a power combiner and how these lines form a power divider. And where we have other capacitive sensors and how we orient those on this particular plane and attach DC power lines that might be needed to drive certain components. All of this is part of the microwave series. Antenna theory is, I think you can see from the pictures, how do you put metal together to make the energy radiate the way you want it. And we also have a course in remote sensing. This one's a little bit more involved. It's really a hybrid course between signal processing and electromagnetics, but it does involve some semiconductor physics. If we look at the satellite that's orbiting the Earth, and the sun's energy radiates with black body radiation, and that reflects off the Earth. That comes back to the satellite, which has these different pixels that are made up these semiconductor materials. And these are designed such that they cause the energy, uh, 
or that such that the energy causes certain responses to this particular wavelengths or frequencies. So if I have a particular set of pixels operating in the blue or the green or the red, then I get images that would look like these black and white or grayscale images, blue, green, and red. They may not make a whole lot of sense individually, but when we combine them, then we begin to realize that it looks much like what we might see from our own eye looking through a camera. And if we combine them differently, we can actually get a lot more information that we can't see from our naked eye, such as where's the look at this image, which is revealing cloud coverage. It's revealing the radar goes right through clouds, but there it is. Or uh, infrared imagery that might reflect off it. You wouldn't even be able to tell what it is. Uh, or look at this, this last image here showing you vegetation and urban areas. You can begin to classify and determine what kind of region you're looking at. So the remote sensing is a fascinating field that involves quite a bit of EM theory, but it does require some linear systems knowledge as well. So again, here you are, EM theory. Again, I'm Dr. Mike Seville. I'd be happy to talk to you about it, answer your questions. So send me an email, let me know, set up some time, and we can discuss it. My goal is to make you successful. So whether or not you pursue this or not, your engineer who understands these foundational principles, has a deep knowledge of engineering principles and how to design circuits and components and systems, and it'll be my honor to teach you that.